A two-part series here from Locked On Blue Jays. We're going to talk about a retool, but also a rebuild in the next two episodes. What should the Blue Jays look to do in the future, and what will prove to be more successful? You are Locked On Blue Jays, your daily Toronto Blue Jays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked on Blue Jays. Thank you for making Locked on Blue Jays your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube by Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode is brought to you by Booking.com. Booking. Yeah, the rights they can make you a fan of any city, even your baseball rivals. Book today on Booking.com, the official accommodation partner of Major League Baseball. Get the Booking.com app today. As always, I'm Brittany Wasco. He's Carter First. You can find us on Twitter, Braden Fabi Wasco. Carter First, too, as well on Instagram and TikTok, at Locked On Blue Jays. If you haven't subscribed on YouTube already, we'd really appreciate it if you did. That helps us out, keeps us at the top of your guys' page. We're trying to get a, you know a, the gang of all Blue Jays fans in Blue Jays line to come on down and subscribe. So you might as well if you haven't already. A um, couple other things. Our shop is available. You know, we got some cool designs, more coming, but... but uh, you know, we got a lot of them out there. So go check the shop down below in the description. Um, it's uh, lockedonbluejays.myspreadshirt.shop.com. Uh, or you can hit the Discord as well, and you can join there to chat anything Blue Jays. A lot of Blue Jays fans in there already. So make sure you guys go and join that. A lot to get into over the next two episodes, right? We have been debating it all season long of should the Blue Jays rebuild? Should the Blue Jays retool? Well, they're only really is two options and I think we know which direction they're heading in this season um but that's not saying that it's the right option we're going to go over both today we're going to majorly focus on the retool and then tomorrow's episode which you guys will see tomorrow uh that'll be the rebuild talk about the rebuild and how, is it a good option for this team but right now Carter we're going to start with the retool and I think you know maybe just give a quick little breakdown on what the difference really is between the retool and the rebuild for sure. These have been two words that we've heard a lot this offseason, just a direction that the Toronto Blue Jays should go with. So let's start with the retool, which we're going to talk about today. So a retool is just, you have your core set of players, is how I explain it. You have your core set of players on this team. It's Vladimir Guerrero Jr., it's Bo Bichette, it's your George Springer, which is kind of unfortunate at this point, but it's your Dalton Varsho, uh, it's your Kevin Gosby, and your Chris Bassett, your Jose Brios, players like that, players of value, usually locked up long-term, the better players on your team, the players that are going to be difference makers in a deep playoff run or just a long, a long season. When you're looking at a retool, uh, it's players that you look to address for free agency. So that's a, what the Toronto just are doing right now. The majority of their players, the guys that you're relying on, Vladimir Groves Jr., Boba Shett, you're just trying to build around these types of players. You're just adding different players from throughout the league. Maybe it's from your system. Just different players to kind of complement these superstar players that you already have on your baseball team. When you talk about a rebuild, this is almost like starting from fresh. This is almost you're giving up on your core players at this moment. So if the Blue Jays decided we're going to trade Boba Shett, we're going to trade Vladimir Groves Jr., it's probably an onslaught of trades that would also pursue after that. That would be a rebuild. That is kind of giving up on what you have, trying to replenish your prospect system, get some younger players, get some players with higher upsides, more talent to build for the future. If you're doing a rebuild, you're probably saying, hey, we're not going to be a good baseball team for at minimum three years. Most of these rebuilds take three, four, five, six years. You're you're saying that we're not ready to compete right now. We don't have the, the skill set to compete for a world championship right now. So we're going to trade away our assets. We're going to get some picks. We're going to get younger. And we're going to try to make a run for the World Championship, the World Series in a five-ish year span. So we're going to stick with the retool. The Toronto Blue Jays, Ross Atkins mainly, has been committed to sticking to this retool. He wants to build around Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Bo Bichette. He wants to extend Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and Bo Bichette. And he just wants to look at free agency just to pick up on some of the things that the Blue Jays don't do well. So we've talked about the bullpen, obviously, a lot. We have talked about a power bat, things like this. Just things to complement the Blue Jays and the Blue Jays players that already are hopefully going to have successful seasons in 2025 and be the cornerstone pieces of your franchise. Yeah, Carter. And you know what? The the sort of the big debate around the, the retool compared to the rebuild, right? It is if they were going to get the Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and, and the Boba Shett contracts um finished and 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 discussed and and signed, I guess. And so 
I think that that is their plan. And, and I think the plan is in full motion for this year to put those extensions in for those two players, because those are guys you need to build around. And, and if you want to win, there's not too many better players than Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and Bo Bichette. So they, they are big pieces for this retool, Carter. Um, and, and, and personally, I mean, we when we had this debate, we, we went back and forth quite a bit on the retool, the rebuild. What should they do? And and over these next, you know, this episode and next episode, you, you'll see where sort of um, our mentality ended up going. Um, but at the end of the day, if you can secure Vladimir Guerrero Jr. for a long time, for a long term, same with Bo Bichette. I mean, you can't waste those years. You can't waste that those two All-Stars prime. So I think that that's why bringing Ross Atkins back and John Schneider, that shows you that they're ready for a retool. And and there has to be one because you can't look at last season and 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 continue on the status quo. Yeah, when, when we talk about rebuilding and retooling with this Toronto Blue Jays team, it pretty much just comes down to whether you believe in Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and Bo Bichette and you want them to be Blue Jays long term. You're going to be on the retool side if you're into Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and Bo Bichette, and you're, you're going to love that Ross Atkins probably returned in this aspect. Probably not for the grand scheme of things, but at least for the Bo Bichette and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. things, because he has expressed nothing but just the gratitude and just the want for Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and Bo Bichette to remain in Toronto. You said they'd already accomplished a whole lot here. I don't necessarily agree with that. I don't think they've accomplished that much here. Again, when you look at individual stuff, sure, for a team aspect, definitely not. But he does look forward to what they can do in the future. All signs pointing towards an extension for Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and Bo Bichette. But with the Toronto Blue Jays wanting to retool, this also kind of works to keep the interest of Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and Bo Bichette. Because what two superstars would want to go to a team that is committing to a rebuild? And if you're committed to a rebuild, it's going to be tough to rebuild and get assets when you're trying to also keep two star players that if you're going to go to a rebuild, you probably want to trade away and get a boatload of assets. So with this retool, it's a lot easier to sell a Toronto Blue Jays team that is wanting to be competitive for 2025 rather than saying, oh, we're not really going to try to win for another five years. They're in win now mode, and that attests to the Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and Bo Bichette saga in Toronto. Yeah, and, and and obviously their original plan of this defense first, pitching first mentality isn't what this team needed, but it was an experiment. Now the, the big question will be, can they you know go away from that, get those big bats that we talked about, Carter, that Ross Atkins already said he doesn't necessarily want to get, um, and then prove to, that this is a proper retool? Because if you're just adding more defense and more pitching, to me, that's not even a retool. That's just the status quo. That's just what we've seen. So, you know, we talk about one or the other, the rebuild, the retool. But I think the worst thing that could happen is everything staying the same. So at the end of the day, when we go through these two episodes, and, and, and you know what, some people will like the rebuild. Some people will re- like the retool. Uh, and we'll get into where we stand on this sort of later on, which I think we've already given away. Um but but the big thing, I think, for both parties, no matter if you're looking at the retool or the rebuild, is that nobody wants to stay on the status quo that was the 2024 Blue Jays. Yeah, nobody wants to even be remotely close to what the 2024 Toronto Blue Jays season was. And retool is an interesting word for the Toronto Blue Jays because I'm, I'm going to just kind of I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant here. Isn't retooling one of those things that every single team in the offseason does? Like, who is running back their regular team from the last season, especially if you didn't win a World Series? If you want a World Series, sure. You run back the same team. Obviously, things went well. I don't, well, I don't see a reason why you'd want to make too many changes. But for a team like the Toronto Blue Jays, for a team like any any team that, again, hasn't made the playoffs, you're not going to run it back with the exact same squad. So, uh, again, in the sense, a retool is just what every team does in an offseason. You just go and get other players. You try to complement the players you already have. You try to, for the most part, I'd say 25 out of the 30 teams are trying to build for the playoffs and make some sort of run, at least trying to get to the dance, as we've seen. So in the sense of a retool, is it really that much different of a plan than just what a regular team would do in the offseason? Especially when you look at the way Ross Atkins does it. He doesn't really add impact players to a team. When you look at the 2023 offseason, he added Justin Turner to, comp- to complement this offense. He added uh, Kevin Kiermaier back to be a defensive stud. You look at some of the other things he did in that offseason, IKF, again, just more of a role move. These, these aren't moving the needle too much. So these just this if this is Ross Atkins at retool, I'm not going to be one to be a huge fan of this because he hasn't showed that he can 
retool in the past. And that is more of a negative, but I just wanted to kind of clarify like what I'm gathering from this retool and just your opinion on if, if retool is something completely different from a regular off season, or do you think it's just the way Ross Atkins has done it? He's just not doing a retool the way a retool should be done. That's exactly it. It, A retool really is taking pieces. Say you are a heavy pitching team, right? Maybe you move some of those assets, assets, to be able to bolster the offense. That would be a retool for me. Um, the Blue Jays are not in a retool. They're not in a rebuild. They're not in the stat. They're, they're just in the status quo. I hate to say that. This is a regular old off, uh, off season, and, and that's what it's looking like it's going to be because you're not moving Kevin Gosman to make room for more hitting. You're not moving Vladimir Guerrero Jr. to make room for more pitching. You're, you're just doing what every other team does in the entirety of the MLB. That's why when when general managers and, and, and everybody coaches all use this term, it's a blanket term for having a normal offseason and hoping. And, and you're trying to pump up the fans by giving them this word. But I think at this point, everybody in the sports world has heard rebuild and re, everybody's so scared of the word rebuild. And everybody knows what the word retool is. It's just the status quo replacement. And so at the end of the day, we can talk retool. We can talk rebuild. We can talk status quo. We can talk business as usual. But really, it all means nothing until they make that first move that shows you and proves to you that a real change is happening. Yeah, for me, like if, if Boba was traded for some other assets that you wanted to still win in 2024, that would be more of a retool. Like, yeah, just signing free agents is just regular business. It's it's not you shouldn't be getting a huge award for completely changing the Toronto Blue Jays. You're not changing the Toronto Blue Jays. You're just adding pieces to just complement an offense, complement a pitching staff. So I want to see if Ross Atkins actually does use the actual word of retooling. And maybe he does move on from somebody in this offseason. Maybe there is a random trade that we do see. Maybe it's Alejandro Kirkby move. Maybe it's Dalton Varsho, which would be crazy. Again, when you look at assets on the Toronto Blue Jays and the, the want to win for next year, they're kind of in an interesting spot because you're not going to trade a pitcher like Kevin Gosman, even though he is coming towards the end of his contract. But if you want to compete for 2025, you will get rid of your ace. That's the opposite of competing. That's not what you want to do. So I think when we say retool, it's going to be interesting to see how Ross Atkins interprets this reward of retooling and how he kind of lays this out in front of us. So we want to go over some positives of the retooling, some negatives of the retooling. And just, again, a bunch of different uh, perspectives and saga that goes into this you know, process of what, the 2024 offseason of the Toronto Blue Jays is going to be a lot more that we want to get into, but we do have uh, a couple of things that we want to mention. So we're just going to take a short break and come back to you with some more Blue Jays content coming up. Today's episode brought to you by booking.com booking dot. Yeah. I always tell you guys how much I love using booking.com explore those U S cities. You've always secretly wanted to learn more about. Maybe it's time to taste test your baseball competition stadium cuisine. Luckily on Booking.com, you can find the stadium stay that's just right for you. With Booking.com's wide variety of choices across the U.S., you can go incognito to all your baseball rival cities. We're heading down to Vegas, February. So we are. I am scouring Booking.com to try to make this trip happen. So you know what? And it's helped us in New York. It's helped us in Minneapolis. It even helped us in Toronto. It, it is the app that, that just saves you so much time. I'm telling you. Booking.com delivers the exact right U.S. stay for you. Booking.com can help you book a stay that's close to your home teams or rival stadiums. Check it out. Booking.com. Booking. Yeah. So, Carter, we talked about what, you know, what a retool is, right? And what the differences are. The big question is, what are the pros of, of a retool? And, and tomorrow we'll get into what are the pros of a rebuild. Today we're going to talk about the pros and cons of the retool, Carter, uh, because there is a lot to look at, right? And when you're making a decision between the two, or I guess if you want to throw the status quo in there as, as the third option, um, but but let's let's start there. Let you know what. Give me give me a pro and a con, and and let you know. Let's start there. Go pro con pro con, and we'll we'll sort of go back and forth a little bit. Sure, we'll start with the pro, and the most obvious pro of what a retooling should give you is that it should, in theory, give you the chance to compete for a World Series in the year of twenty twenty five. Is it going to? Is the argument again that could be uh, on the negative side of it, but 
in reality and what a retool should be is you should be semi-confident in what you have. And if you are retooling, you should be confident that you at least can make some sort of a playoff run. Your end out goal, obviously, is winning a World Series. So if you're going to be... Uh, if your aspirations are to make the playoffs, you want to go deep. You shouldn't just, oh, I want to make the playoffs and make the first round of the playoffs, whatever, make the wildcard series, because that hasn't worked out, obviously, for our Toronto Blue Jays organization. You want to be able to compete. You want to make a deep playoff run and win a World Series. So the positives of retool, again, you're not rebuilding. You're not giving away all of your superstars. Baseball should be better in Toronto. You should be seeing a better caliber of baseball in Toronto. So that would be a big positive of the retool. So the negative of retooling in this other aspect, I guess, uh, which would be the opposite, would say you do this retool and things just don't work out. You, you don't make the playoffs and everything goes bad. You have almost a recreation. Again, I don't even want to say this of 2024. You don't make the playoffs and then you miss out on some of these assets. Chris Bassett, maybe you cut your losses at the trade deadline. But again, at this point, you could if you wanted to rebuild anyway, you could have moved on from Vlad. You could have moved on from Bo, Chris Bassett, you name it, all these guys in the offseason and gotten a lot more in return for what their value would have been with their contracts being still a full year on their contract. And you have 45, 50 games left at the All-Star break or at the trade deadline, sorry, I should say. You're not going to get as many assets back in return for your superstar caliber players. Yeah, Carter. And and you know what, when, when we look at these two sort of uh, the, the pro and then the con and in both of these lights, right, you, you have to think that this Blue Jays team is expecting that to happen. But I don't necessarily like the con part of this is, is what's the different from last offseason? In my head, it's the same thing. You wanted to retool and push this team further. Instead, it dragged it back down to the depths of hell, which is not making the playoffs. So in my head, we've seen the con. Now the big question is, will this management group learn from that and, and, and learn from their mistakes and, and, and learn to be successful this offseason? That's going to be my big question. And that's going to be the biggest thing. It's just, it's going to be success level. It's going to be the big measurement of this. If this season was successful or not, did the Toronto Blue Jays make the playoffs? Did they win a playoff game? Honestly, like I think a lot of the Toronto Blue Jays fans, obviously the end goal is the world series, but a lot of us are at the point where if we can even just make the ALDS, I think a lot of fans are going to be positive in what the Toronto Blue Jays brought. We just want playoff baseball back in Toronto. Again, when you, if we do end up losing an ALDS series, obviously there's, going to be negative emotions there things are probably going to go wrong you're not going to be happy in the moment but i think at that point you can look back on the season and be like hey at least we tasted playoff baseball this we had a little bit of fun for the playoffs and and just had a fun year in 2025 obviously making the playoffs is a lot more fun than uh having the, a season the way the toronto Blue Jays season went in 2024 but uh this one again positives negatives of a retool this one isn't necessarily for the fans whatsoever it's just Looking at a retool from a business perspective, when you still have a chance of making the playoffs, you still have star caliber players, your roster is probably going to be better if you're shooting for the playoffs, obviously, if you're rebuilding. Rodgers is going to make more money retooling and just promising success from a business standpoint rather than them saying, hey, we're kind of giving up. We're going to rebuild. We're going to try to get some more assets, get younger, and try to make a push in five years. That doesn't really show a lot of hope or excitement for Toronto Blue Jays fans. So in this aspect, from a business perspective, it makes way more sense with the market the Toronto Blue Jays do have to say, that, hey, we're going to try to compete, even if they don't necessarily have the cards in place and the skill set that would actually allow us to make a deep playoff run. It benefits them way more from a business perspective. And as we know, money runs the world. So I think the Toronto Blue Jays, they are more willing to put an okay caliber team on the field and promise success rather than, admitting and actually facing the music and being and saying, Hey, we don't have the skill set. We don't have the ability to compete with the New York Yankees, the Houston Astros, the Detroit Tigers, apparently the Baltimore Royals, these caliber teams. And they, they just have, they can't face the music. So it benefits them more in the long term to say, Hey, we have a chance. Yeah, Carter. And this is what I sort of was talking about early in the episode of, of teams being afraid of the word rebuild, right? They, they don't want to go full rebuild because that means see you later money in the pockets of all the people that run everything. So no one is going to like that. And he, honestly, even the retool is getting to that point. Teams don't even want to say that, but, but, but it's the, it's the word of the, the, the times right now. Um, and, and to be honest with you, they need to, they need, they need to bring in money and, and money helps pay some of the players that you hope to bring in. So as much as you, you hate when, when teams do this, because they, they are sort of, you know, pulling the wool over our eyes. At the end of the day, the money that they make is going to be money that they pay the players. And if they don't, if they're not bringing in 
very much money. They're not going to put very much money back into it. The Oakland athletics. Um, so there you go. Right. And, and so at the end of the day, you want Rogers to make money. I think as fans, we want Rogers to make money so that in an ideal world, they give us a better baseball team. Has that worked out? Not necessarily, but in theory, that's how it should work. It is and it isn't because Rogers is also has their hand in a million other business opportunities. The other hand, the NHL, obviously, where do we pay? Not necessarily us, but where do a lot of Canadians pay their phone bills? Like Rogers is more than fine enough to like, they don't have to rely on what they're getting from their baseball, from their fans and saying just all oh, the attendance from their baseball games. Rogers is making more than enough money that they should be able to, again, this is more of, I guess, a positive for the retooling. They should be able to pay some free agents. They should have the money to be able to sign some of these big free agent players and bring some talent to this squad. So the money should not be a problem for this Rogers team. And I think it's an absolute joke if they're saying, oh, we, we need the fans to support this baseball team when they haven't really done anything to show, give us a reason to even support the baseball team, especially after this 2024 season. You look at what they did again. This is always going to be the crush that we look back for the 2024 season. It's just going back to the offseason. There's just more, the most obvious thing of all time that Ross Atkins did not do enough to this offense, did not add to the bowl, but didn't do enough to this roster construction to give this team a good chance of winning in 2024. Yeah, Carl, I mean, I mean, you're right, right? At the end of the day, it does it. Like, in the grand scheme of things, the money shouldn't matter. But but if I put, you know, my money into and I invest into a business, even even if I'm loaded, but I and I'm not seeing any return from that, I'm probably going to pull back a little bit. And so from a business perspective, I do understand what it what they're coming from. But at the end of the day, if you're not spending money, you're not going to make money. So, you know, it's a it's that old adage, spend money to make money. That's what the Toronto Blue Jays and Rogers needs to do to because you know, it's the one team in Canada. The fans are going to support the team almost no matter what. So give us some good baseball. At the end of the day, that's all we can ask for and all we can hope for. It's it's, it's if they come through. Yeah, that, it, That's going to be a question that I have uh, for tomorrow's episode. We're going to leave the rebuilding talk for rebuilding. But is there actually ever going to be another true rebuild in Toronto Blue Jays history? Again, that might be a completely crazy take as we'll get into uh, for tomorrow's episode a little bit more, but let's stick to the retooling. So for, I, I have some more positives. Really the big overarching negative is just what if retooling doesn't work out? Because again, like you, other than that, what else can really go wrong? It's just, you don't make the playoffs. It's just the success level is really where you're measuring the negatives. And I guess the other one would be like that asset management is that if you, the retool doesn't work out and you already have a plan to kind of rebuild after why wouldn't you just move on right now and kind of start the process earlier as a sense? You're kind of just wasting a year is the other uh, negative as to the retool if things don't work out. But another positive that you could look at for this retool is that you just kind of did get a haul from this last trade deadline. So you do have some prospects. Again, maybe they get some uh, have some good seasons in AAA. Maybe they start in the MLB team and they start progressing and they get better and they can become MLB regulars. So there is some hope for the prospects that you got this last deadline. And in a sense, I guess this can be worked as, as a positive for the 2025 season because you wouldn't have had Will Wagner to rely on. You wouldn't have had a Joey Lopervito that you could have uh, some reliance on. Some A Jake Bloss is another card that could be an impact piece for your team in 2025. So there is a little bit of upside in some prospects that you did get at this last deadline. So you do have the option. Again, you want to really be immersed in free agency. You don't want to just rely on internal stuff. But if you do need that boost from within the organization, as we've got from David Schneider, from Spencer Horwitz, you can name a million players from last season that you got the boost from. But at least gives you some more options internally that you can add to this Blue Jays roster. Yeah, and you need those pieces, right? You, you need those pieces that are within the system that are going to come up. Because you, you can't go get six players in free agency and hope that they all work out. That's just not how things work. That's going to be way too much money and nobody in their right mind is going to spend that much. Um, so you need those in-house pieces for sure. And and you're right. When when we look back, that is what the 2024 season gave this Toronto Blue Jays team was a, a, a more replenished system. And, you know, you look at guys like Jake Walsh, he hope can maybe make a couple spot starts or come in out of the bullpen or, or guys like Will Wagner that maybe can come back next season and continue on his streak of what he was doing. Um, and, and, you know, guys, even like guys that, you know, we had from before, David Schneider, uh, Spencer Horwitz, Ernie Clement, all these guys are going to be pieces in this team next year um, because you need them to be. You need those in-house, you know, steady, not all-stars, not superstars, nothing like that, just your everyday players 
they're going to come in and get get the job done that they need to do. It's, it's there's a lot to be up in the air again it's free agency is going to be a massive thing you're going to need your superstar to perform like superstars as well like you're going to need boba Shett to go back to boba Shett for him if this team even wants to be slightly competitive for 2025 you can't have george bringer boba Shett at the top of your lineup for the first third of the season the way they were producing and expect to do anything and again this is another question we're going to have to get into is is george bringer going to be effective how's dalton Varsho going to be how's alejandro kirk going to be and vladimir Guerrero jr have a bounce back season and just, again, one more thing before we do head into our, our last segment here is just one more negative about uh, this Toronto Blue Jays team is that, again, things don't go well. You have a lot of contracts that are up at the end of the season. So with this retool, like you got Jordan Romano, Eric Swanson, just to name a few, Chris Bassett, Paul Bichette, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. You can name a lot more to this list. There's a lot of players that are unrestricted free agents at the end of the season. Things don't go well again. You're, it's it's fire sale in Toronto Blue Jays line. You're not re, you're not going to be able to resign a majority of these players. And again, I guess a positive could be you cut your losses at the trade deadline if things don't go well. But that's not something that I could be excited about. I can't really put that in a positive of retooling because the point of retooling is to be competitive. And if you're selling at the trade deadline, you did not accomplish your goal of the 2024 off season. So this retooling, uh, this aspect, we're going to give our final thoughts in this last segment. But again, one quick short break. And we're going to come back to you with our final thoughts about the the retooling of the Toronto Blue Jays for this episode of Locked on Blue Jays. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. You guys know I'm the biggest fan of FanDuel because I've been winning money. And, I, you know, at this point, if I'm winning money, I'm going to be a fan of anything. So FanDuel is my number one place, especially in the live same game parlays, which I talk about all the time. So when you get that hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live, play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Like I said, just go in. You can check to see how many people have placed the same bets as you, which I really like. I want to know you know, if I'm in the majority. Because if I'm, if I'm placing a bet from left field, well, I, I, don't, I don't necessarily know why I want to place that one. So maybe I'll go throw it on something else. Or, or maybe I just got to pick a different sport. I don't know. FanDuel.com. Check out their same game parlays and uh, make sure you guys place a bet on uh, maybe a future on the 20 in the 2025 Toronto Blue Jays. Today's episode also brought to you by Game Time. I'm going to use Game Time almost on the weekly here uh, in in Winnipeg because we will have Winnipeg Jets games. So I'll be trying to go to a ton of those this year. And Game Time is the best place to get tickets. It makes it so easy. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out all the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste your time searching through thousands of tickets. I always talk about that. It's my one of my biggest pet peeves. I want to go on, see what the best deal is, click it, buy it, get out of there. And, and another great thing with them is they have the all-in pricing. So you know what you're paying right immediately when you click on the ticket. You don't have to go to the checkout and then see what all the extra fees are. It's fantastic. They also have the lowest price guaranteed, or Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code L O C K E D O N M L B for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. So we've given we've given you what what is a retool? What is it going to look like? What are the pros? What are the cons? Now I think it's time, Carter, for us to give our opinion. Do we think that this is the proper way to go for the 2025 Blue Jays? What what are your thoughts? See, I have uh, I my overwhelming argument with this is that I do think that the Toronto Blue Jays have the tools right now within their organization when you look at free agency things like that. When you look at a roster standpoint, they do have pieces that they can build around that I think they can be competitive and battle for a playoff spot next season. Am I so sure they can go deep into a playoff run again? Things like this, it's, it's tough to really fathom that at the start of the season when you have your roster because I think things can translate on paper very well. You can look very good on paper and then you go on the baseball field and things don't work out very well. So I think that in, I think the Toronto Blue Jays could compete next season. I think that is a possibility. And I would normally say that I think the Toronto Blue Jays should retool. I saved my one negative, my biggest negative about this team and this retooling process for this because I think this is the reason why I don't think a retool is going to work for the Toronto Blue Jays. And it's who you have doing the retool. It's Ross Atkins. 
And we've, it's just the history. We've seen Ross Atkins has not been able to put together a very good team throughout free agency. The only success really Ross Atkins had throughout free agency is yes, he signed Marcus Simeon. That was a good move. But again, this guy was already an established baseball player. He's had a career year there. Robbie Ray, that you can contribute that. Again, I'm giving that more to Pete Walker, not so much as Ross Atkins. Really overwhelmingly, you have not, is, Ross Atkins has not shown that he can put together a competent baseball club that can be competitive and can go together and make a deep playoff run. Uh, in 2025, especially when you're looking at the Toronto Blue Jays and what he's done. So for me, it's, it's Ross Atkins, is that you don't have the right captain at the helm to put together the team that should be able to compete for 2025. I just, I just don't think Ross Atkins has it within his mind. Within It's not in the cards for Ross Atkins to actually put together a competitive team that can make a deep playoff run in 2025. Yeah. And you know what? Uh, you, you sort of took the words right out of my mouth, Carter. Uh, at, at the end of the day, I, I don't want to see a rebuild. I, I really don't. I, I think that would be horrible. It would be a long season, season after season after season to do a rebuild. But at the end of the day, I just don't trust Ross Atkins either. I, I don't trust the moves he's going to make. I think in my head, I have a, a, a plan of what it should be. And, and yes, you can call me armchair manager, whatever you want to call me. But he's proven to me over the last eight, nine seasons that he just doesn't know how to build a winning baseball team. And, and why he was brought back when you could have brought somebody new in and handed the keys over and let them go full reign. At the end of the day, I'm just, I, I'm sort of just done. Like, I, I just don't, I just don't want to be put through the same thing again. And I feel like that's what's on the horizon here with the 2025 Blue Jays. Yeah. It's sort of like fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. Right. It's like, we've seen this just play out multiple times and it's, it's one of those things like we've seen the same thing over and over again. Nothing's changed. Why would we believe that anything is going to change? If we had a retool, I don't, don't even necessarily care who it would be. It's just, I know that Ross Atkins has not worked for the Toronto Blue Jays. You get a new face in here. It gives you some hope that gives you, again, it's, I rather have a situation that you don't know the outcome where you have a situation where you have, repeated history of what has happened with the Toronto Blue Jays organization. You decide to run that back thinking something is going to change. That's kind of where I'm at with the Toronto Blue Jays organization is that you haven't seen it work. Why run it back with the same guy again? If you had a new guy doing this retool thing, I think that would be, that's the best way you can run this Toronto Blue Jays team. I think if you have Ross Atkins at the helm, I don't think you rebuild either because I don't want Ross Atkins rebuilding his team. You just kind of saw how that worked out. I think if you're going to run with Ross Atkins, I guess you do do it in this retool way, but I just think you move on from Ross Atkins and that solves a lot of your problems. Yeah. And we've gone over this plenty of times. We both understand it. I think a lot of the other fans also understand that it's time to move on from Ross Atkins and, and we don't trust him with the keys to the castle, but at the end of the day, this is where we are. And, and do we have faith and do we think that this is the best option with what we know right now that Ross Atkins will be back. John Schneider will be back. Um, and, and this is the direction we think they're going into. Is this the right decision right now with those two guys at the helm? Yeah, probably. You can't be the status quo and you can't do a rebuild. So I guess with the options that are presented, this is the best option for the Toronto Blue Jays. Yeah, you just, if Mark Shapiro, you know, just I, I guess had his head screwed on a little bit better. I don't know. Maybe Ross Atkins proves us wrong and he does figure it out, but he'd have to completely change history. And if, yeah, history writes itself usually. So again, it's it's tough to get excited when you've seen Ross Atkins and what he has done. But at the end of the day, you still have Vladimir Guerrero Jr. You still have Boba Shett. You still have guys on this team that have shown that they can be very good players in baseball and who knows like we said about the john schneider stuff maybe ross atkins isn't the only guy making these decisions they did fire a bunch of guys uh within this organization not as much as we hope for but there has been some changes maybe the new faces help them out in a sense maybe they steer them in a better direction but unfortunately for us our hands uh all of our chips are in with ross atkins and ross atkins is going to be the guy that does make or break the toronto blue Jays 2025 season so i guess we better jump on board with this retool i hope that he can sign vladimir Gro jr and boba Shett. That's the positive of Ross Atkins is that he has expressed a lot of interest in those two. And as we've discussed on this podcast, me and you want them back desperately. Some Blue Jays fans don't agree, but that's the fun of being a fan of a sports team is that not everyone's going to agree. You're going to be able to get in some debates, some of them a little bit more emotionally uh, guarded than uh, some logics. I guess people get emotional about baseball. How can you not get romantic about baseball as uh, a quote has said? But, uh, Braden, you got anything else to add about uh, kind of the retooling aspect of the Toronto Blue Jays? Not really, man. Not really. I, like, we've covered it, right? We, we know what the plan is and what it should be. It, it's just the execution. At the end of the day, that's what this comes down to is, is 
Will Ross Atkins be able to execute the plan? We'll have to wait and see. Again, uh, we want to, you know, mention as well, tomorrow's episode will be the rebuild. Let's take a look at it. You know, are the Blue Jays thinking about a rebuild? If next season doesn't go their way, is the rebuild in the cards? That'll be a question for tomorrow's episode. So hopefully you guys tune in. Also, Friday's episode will be the Locked On Blue Jays Awards. Big show. We'll be talking about all the big plays, the, you know, who, which players deserve this and this and this and blah, blah, blah. We'll get into it. It'll be a fun show. We're going to have a blast with it. It's not going to be the most super serious thing of all time, but it's going to be a lot of fun. We're, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk, you know, give the guys flowers that that need to. And, you know, the guys who didn't play well, they'll they'll hear about it too. So, uh, Carter, anything else before we sort of uh, head out of here on this Tuesday night? No, it's a little bit more about uh, the award show. We'll have some serious awards. We'll have probably the odd one that's kind of just thrown in there. Maybe a Bradley Zimmer award, maybe a Charlie Montoya award. Oh, we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, we have a lot of them uh, talked about already, but we still have some uh, to add in as well. So if you guys uh, have some ideas, probably over the next day or two, we're going to finalize our awards within uh, the next couple of days. So leave a comment in uh, the Discord, obviously YouTube, Instagram, or Twitters are obviously at the bottom of the screen. Braden 5 Wasco, Carter First 2. So if you have any ideas, let us know. But uh, yeah, just thank you guys for watching. And uh, hopefully we'll see you guys tomorrow. And then obviously for our award show on Friday.